have a unique opportunity coming our way for the Pacific folks. It's going to be overnight tonight through early tomorrow. Moon, sun, earth alignment. This is rare. How does this give us a lunar eclipse? Yeah. Um, so it, like you say, it's the alignment of the sun, the earth, and the moon. This is when the moon moves into the shadow cast by the earth. Um, and during that time, during the total phase, uh, we're seeing the, all the sunrises and sunsets all around the world being projected onto the face of the moon. Uh, it's a really beautiful sight, and it lasts for a little over an hour. And this is different than a solar eclipse. You need special gla glasses for that. Uh, tell me the difference between the solar eclipse and lunar eclipse. That's right. Um, I mean, one of the lovely things about a total lunar eclipse is that you don't need any special glasses. You don't need any equipment and you don't have to travel. You can see this from your porch or from your backyard. Um, as long as the weather cooperates, uh, all you have to do is look to the south. And um, you have you know, a full hour of totality, but even before then you can watch the partial phases, which is when the moon is moving into that shadow and you see that dark part take a bite out of the moon and that bite, you know, grows uh, larger and larger until the moon is entirely in the shadow. Um, it's a leisurely uh, a view, unlike a total solar eclipse, which can be a, a little nerve wracking. Mm -hmm. um, you know, bring your hot drink, bring your, your, your pie on pie day outside and, and uh, just kind of um, relax and, and watch the spectacle. Since you mentioned pie, I'll bring that up here. And I know that you also work with the LRO data visualizer. Uh, we're learning a lot about our nearest neighbor. And part of that is from uh, the LRO project. So tell me a little bit how pie works into that as well as LRO. <laughs> okay, so that's a that's a connection that I'll work hard to make. Um, Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter has been in orbit around the moon since 2009. It's creating um, global maps of the color of the moon, which tells us something about the composition, and also maps of the shape of the moon. We know where every crater and mountain is. Um, this is going to be important for future exploration. Um, the Pi connection is that I mean, pi is the uh, is the circumference of a circle divided by the diameter, um, and that shows up in all kinds of math and science calculations. Um, and there it is. I've memorized it to twenty five places, but uh, I know some people who have memorized it to more. But I, you know, it it pops up all the time in the calculations I did to create the the lunar eclipse visualizations, um, because that's all trigonometry. It's all sines and cosines and angles and rotations. Um, so having this eclipse on Pi Day on March 14th um, is kind of added sauce for this particular event. Um, it brings together, you know, everything that I do. There seems to be a resurgence of the interest in the moon. Um, what are you most excited about in this new era or of potential exploration, new satellite imagery? I'm old enough to remember the Apollo 11 landing. And when I was a kid, I thought we would all be there um, by now. Um, but it turns out it's really hard to get to the moon. So I'm very excited that we're um, making the effort now to go back and not to go to the same places we went before. Uh, all the Apollo missions landed near the equator. We're aiming for the south pole of the moon now. Um, that's a very interesting place because we think it's where we might find water in some of those uh, permanently shadowed craters. Uh, water is incredibly important uh, as a resource for creating um, a sustainable presence on the moon, not just visiting and leaving, but actually learning how to live on another planet. So it, how, what are your thoughts about astronauts actually able to live on the moon once we're finding kind of those pockets of uh, water? Yeah, I'm very excited about it. I mean, um, like I said, when I was a kid, I thought we'd all be doing that. It's so expensive to bring all of your resources with you. If you can find something as important as water, um, it, it makes it much easier to sustain your presence. Uh, water isn't just for drinking. It's also for creating rocket fuel and for generating electricity um, and for, you know, all kinds of other processes that allow us to explore the moon uh, in greater detail. So um, 
all of that's very exciting to me. Um, the renewed interest in the moon is very exciting. Uh, I feel like a kid again. And this has to do with the NASA's Artemis campaign. Explain a little bit more about what that involves. So Artemis is the is the set of missions that will bring humans back to the moon. Um, Artemis is going to be landing near the South Pole um, because it's geologically interesting. And it's also, like I said, where we think we can find water and other volatiles that are trapped in um, in the bottoms of those craters. Um, and it's, a you know, to some extent, learning how to live on the moon, um, having the technology to go back there and sustain our presence is a stepping stone into the solar system, um, beginning with Mars. It's a way to um, finally build a long-term exploration strategy that gets us out into the solar system uh, and really helps us learn about our own origins. Um, the great thing about the moon is that it remembers everything. Um, unlike on the earth where weather and tectonics are erasing all of that early solar system history, the moon remembers all of it. So we just have to go there and, and read what the moon is telling us. It's a natural time capsule for us. Exactly. <laughs> Um, okay, so as we're edging towards the end of this interview, I wanted to ask you um, a couple of things. One, we've got another lunar eclipse coming. This feels like it's kind of a big year for the moon. I, I mean, it's a huge year for the moon. Um, but I, I think we're going to be seeing this level of activity for many years to come. That's certainly my hope. Um, so we have this eclipse on March 14th. Uh, the next total lunar eclipse will be in 2026. They tend to happen about once a year. What's special about this one, though, is that the entire United States is right dead center in the best place to see it. Um, and that won't happen again until 2048. So it's an opportunity to share with uh, friends across the country um, this experience of seeing the entire eclipse from beginning to end. Grab a cup of coffee because it's going to be a long night. <laughs> yes, and it's a it's a late night for me on the East Coast. Um, yeah. Great. Okay. Well, thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate it. And we're looking forward to the eclipse tonight. Thank you. It was my pleasure.